Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another epic edition of What's Up, Wyndham Tech. I am Fred Ashton, Interim Principal at Wyndham Tech, and I'm here with the best guidance department in the whole world. And I'd like uh, each of our guidance department counselors to introduce themselves and just give us a little bit, a little bit of information about your background, please. Hi, Doc. Hi, Laura. Uh, my name is Laura Jones. I am the coordinator of the uh, guidance department here at Wyndham Tech. Uh, this is my fifth year at Wyndham Tech, and prior to that, uh, I spent 10 years in uh, Wyndham Public Schools. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And my name is Wilder Zandanella. I'm a school counselor. I've been here approximately four years, going on four years. Um, and prior to my experience at Wyndham Tech, I worked in the drug and alcohol field um, and also did some group home stuff with mental health and addiction issues. Welcome. Thank you. Hi, Doug. Um, Again, hi. Uh, Scott Hale here, school counselor. Excited to be at Wyndham Tech. Previous background uh, came from Goodwin Tech, background in automotive uh, technology. Uh, experienced in that through postgraduate program at Ellis Tech way back in the day, a long time ago. Uh, a lot of various jobs that I did, but uh, background also undergrad in elementary education. And uh, I, think I, I think I found my fit. Thanks, Scott. Good to have you all with us. Let's just Thanks. talk a little bit about uh, Wyndham Tech guidance and what your what your purpose and what your functions are at the school. And Laura, maybe you could start us off. Okay. Um, if I had to try to describe what what school counselors do at at Wyndham Tech, I, I think that's kind of a, a difficult thing because we do lots of different things. But our main objective is really to work with kids in, in three different areas: in the the social emotional areas the academic areas, and in the kind of the career searching areas. Mm -hmm. So I'd say when you're talking about personal social, we spend a lot of time working with kids on uh, different transition issues into the building, kids that are struggling for whatever reason, whether that be at home or uh, with a teacher or a friend. Uh, we do a good amount of referrals to uh, mental health outside resources. and. Hopefully, we're just looked at as as a place, uh, kind of a soft place for kids to land if they need us. On the academic side, what we do is really um, watch over kids because they need so much watching over. We look at their grades constantly. We're in um, daily communication with parents and teachers about uh, kids' grades, about uh, what they're doing, what they need to be doing more of, and we kind of act as the uh, the middle person, the middleman, sometimes between teachers and, and parents, between parents and their own children, and just try to keep the kids uh, successful and uh, keeping their grades up. And then as far as that last tier of, of career, uh, our job is really to make sure that we're pushing kids in the right direction and making sure they're exploring all their career options. Um, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but um, just making sure that kids know uh, and have the exposure to the different types of career choices. Thanks, Laura. I know you and, and your staff work really hard on the recruiting process, the selection process, and uh, could you just tell us a little bit about um, this year's ninth grade or the incoming ninth grade and how okay. recruitment and selection works? Well, we're, we are a public school, Wyndham Tech, and, and, and all the, the technical high schools across the state are publicly funded. However, we're a little bit different than other schools in that uh, our students are selected and they need to apply. So part of that application process starts very beginning uh, of the year where myself and, and uh, my colleagues are out in the community and we're recruiting. And basically that means that we're going into the schools and we're talking to students and parents about our program and all the wonderful reasons why they should be looking at a technical education for their kids. Um, that recruitment then moves kind of into the, the late fall when we have our students actually apply through their middle school counselors um, by filling out one of our applications. And then our applications roll in uh, through the holiday season and uh, right after Christmas we start evaluating those and by very early spring the students in the eighth grade know whether or not they are going to be members of, of the Wyndham Tech family in that upcoming uh, year. There are some big changes coming to the application process for this coming school year that haven't been in place, you know, at least since I've 
been part of the team. Um, one of the biggest changes that we're going to see is that the Connecticut mastery tests, which were a big part of our current application and how we scored our application, no longer are taking place. So we don't have that data any longer. So what's going to happen next year, and Doc, I actually haven't shared this with you yet, so this is going to be a surprise to you, but Sounds good. Um, we are actually going to go out into the community and we have to individually test every single student who wants to apply to Wyndham Tech. And that is not something that we've had to do in the past. So it's going to lend itself to a very busy fall for, for us, and, um, but it's, it's going to be great and we're going to get the data that we need. But it's gonna it's gonna call for I think a little more collaboration um, between uh, myself and those great middle school counselors that are always so helpful to me because it's gonna mean that we are in the schools more actually utilizing their computer labs, uh, potentially testing their kids uh, in our building maybe even on Saturdays or in the evening. So it's a big change coming, but we're ready. And we go to a bunch of schools, don't we? We do. We recruit. Uh, we, we have about 20 sending towns currently, 20 to 22 different towns within our building currently. And our recruitment, yes, we usually go to about 15 or so different towns. Okay, great, thank you. So Wilder, in and, and looking ahead, uh, or, uh, kind of the next question, we talked about recruiting and selection. So once we get the ninth graders, um, what, what, do, what, do, what do we do at Wyndham Tech that uh, enables ninth graders to check out all of the trades and make some informed choices and some good decisions about the rest of their high school career. Right, because of course we don't assume that they know at 14 or 15 years old what they want to do with the rest of their lives. That's so. Right. <laughs> so we have a really neat program called the Exploratory Program um, where the students come in fresh. Um, some of them definitely have the knowledge of what shop they're really interested in. Some say, I want automotive, I want culinary, that's what I'm here for. Um, but we do give them the opportunity to explore all nine of the shops. Um, so just to briefly go through quickly what they are, we have automotive, electrical, culinary, carpentry, architecture, e-tron, which is electronics, manufacturing, health tech, and HVAC. Did I get them all? You did. All nine. You do it just the way I do. I, I, I walk right up and down the halls in my, in my mind. That's and, and exactly what I did. <laughs> I didn't want to leave anyone out. Yeah. Um, so the kids have the opportunity to explore all nine of our shops. Um, so when they come in, exploratory phase one consists of all of the students going through every single shop for at least two days, or not at least, they do go <laughs> for two days to each of those shops. Um, at that time, they get the opportunity to explore what the shop is about, meet the instructor, learn about what the shop policies are going to be, um, perhaps learn about what kind of tools or equipment is necessary. Um, really just gives them a sneak peek into what the shop is going to be about. Um, after phase one is complete, they enter into what we call phase two, um, which is where they select their top three shops that they're interested in. So let's say a student wants health tech, manufacturing, and automotive. Um, we will place them in each of those three shops for four days. So at that time, they really get a sense for what the shop will be like. Um, they'll probably be given some homework assignments, um, some production work so that they can test their skills out. Um, it gets them to see if this is really something that they're interested in. Um, and then phase three starts about early to mid-December. Um, that's where they actually pick their final shop. So we host a shop selection night at school where the kids and the parents actually get to come in. They get to tour the building one last time meet the shop instructors. Um, parents get the chance to meet the shop instructors as well. Um, get a chance to see what the shop actually looks like. Um, and at that, at that time, we expect that they've made their final choice. So they fill out a little sheet that says, this is my first choice, this is my second choice, this is my third choice. Um, the really important thing to note about exploratory is, however, kids don't just get what shop they want. Um, they really have to actually succeed in that shop and do well in school all around. So a student who really wants health tech can't blow off automotive and the rest. They really need to make sure that they're focusing to do their very best in all three of those shops um, because we literally look at grades. And if there's a kid who has a 93 over a kid who has a 92, the kid with the 93 will get that shop placement first. So um, we're very lucky. Most of our kids do outstanding, and we only usually get a couple of kids mm -hmm. um, that unfortunately don't get their first shop choice. But we're able to then place them accordingly, and they usually they usually find success in a different shop. So I have found that you guys do an amazing job, and I think it somehow just almost intuitively. The students end up with the shop they want, yeah. with as you said, very you know very few rare exceptions. Right. They get what they want. Everybody's happy, and I've also discovered in exploratory that lots of times students come in and they've got this preconceived notion mm -hmm. that says, "I want to be a carpenter," and then they end up in automotive, or "I want yes. to be in manufacturing," and they end up in culinary. Mm -hmm. 
And so, um, you know, for parents out there who are watching and students who are watching, the exploratory portion is really very, very important that everybody does their best in all of the shops, gets a real sampling and a real flavor of, of what the shops are like, and then they make an informed decision. And it's really neat to see kids come in, they've got these ideas or parents have ideas, and then things change. Yeah. And so we really do want to invest that time so that um, once that shop is chosen, they, they, they're gonna, it's going to be a productive shot for them mm -hmm. for the next three and a half years. And we do and encourage them to come in with an open mind because there are mm -hmm. kids that my dad works in automotive, my dad owns an automotive shop, I'm going automotive. Um, but we encourage them to really have an open mind because many of the kids have skills in so many other areas um, and oftentimes find a better placement. And we do have the occasional kid that gets placed in a shop that isn't that doesn't end up being what they love and what they're passionate about. And we three work with that student um, to ensure that we hopefully do find them a shop that's better for them. Um, and that happens, you know, every so often as well. But it's, it's to be expected. I know what you mean too. I mean about just how so many tech students seem to have these these multiple intelligences and a variety mm -hmm. of skills. And I'm thinking Definitely. of a guy named Ryan who's a senior in electrical. He's doing great in electrical, and you know, in talking with teachers in automotive, this guy has rebuilt 12 engines and a bunch of transmissions just off on the side, wow. along with getting his electrical hours and, and being a, a skilled electrician. So mm -hmm. that, that's, what, that's what tech schools are all about, is kids with multiple talents and multiple ways of mm -hmm. solving problems and multiple intelligences. Um, Scott, just move along to you. Still, still thinking and talking about freshmen. As, as freshmen enter Wyndham Tech, could you could you tell us a little bit, this is kind of like a two-pronged question, what are some of the things that, um, some of the barriers that might get in the way of freshmen succeeding at at, at, uh, at Wyndham Tech, not any high school, but Wyndham Tech in particular, and, and flip side of that coin, what are some of the things that freshmen can do as they enter Wyndham Tech that are going to help ensure a higher probability of success? Well, with ninth grade being at large a transitional year, uh, we're already seeing kids come in with uh, concerns about uh, you know being comfortable and, and learning the school and, and understanding the environment and our culture. Uh, but the students come to us with varying abilities, uh, whether it be time management, organization, self-advocating. Uh, so, really helping them to learn what's important and to develop a routine that works for them, uh, it takes time. It definitely takes perseverance, uh, a lot of times on our part, uh, working with teachers, working with parents. Uh, overall, uh, another thing that might be a barrier is the, the low maturity level. Uh, you know, that's something that we're, we're understanding of. You know, we, kids need guidance, they need support. Uh, so. Uh, we are there to assist them with that. And, and it's, a big, it's a big jump. I mean, some kids are coming from middle schools with uh, maybe 50, 60, 100 kids, and they're, mm -hmm. they're walking into a high school yeah. with 500, right. 550 students. So where kids in, in students in middle school might have been used to uh, working or being part of a team, where they, they got support. Uh, where maybe regular meetings occurred, and they, they you know, they, they had a, a certain group of teachers that they worked with, uh, they are in with a lot of other students. New environment. We are, especially I am, encouraging them to develop uh, the, the number one tool that they can use throughout their life, and that's their voice, their ability to communicate, ties in with self-advocating. Um, so overall, considering those barriers, I would like to think that they're short term. Uh, by the time we get close to the end of ninth grade, uh, it is our hope through our uh, steadfast uh, commitment and just building a rapport with them and, and whether it be a soft place to land or a place that they can come to learn. Uh, I think working with teachers, col you know, collaborating, um, the teachers are very important in the classroom and teaching, you know, the, the uh, curriculum and the, and the content and us working with the teachers and working with the student to try and together, uh, whether it be to, to develop the uh, time management uh, skills to um, keep continually reminding them of use, using resources like our agenda, you know, time management, writing things down, when is an assignment due, especially maybe a cross-cycle project. I'm a big fan of, of using uh, technology like these smartphones where you can uh, put in reminders 
in a smartphone for, you know, check on project, do for a science class where, when they're in shop. So they're continually working on academics still while they're in shop. So getting, that is one, one of the largest barriers is that where the, the kids feel like when they're in shop that they, they can maybe forget about academics. So I want to support their focus being on all of their learning in both academics and shop simultaneously. You mentioned a lot of good things. I'm, I'm glad that you brought up the uh, smartphones. The uh, second part, if I, I'm going to interrupt you real quick because you asked me a very keep, important question. Keep going. How do we see that students are being successful? Um, we, we were laughing earlier about uh, students finding each other, making friends. I mean, there are so many different pairs of students that are, they, they become inseparable. Um, so seeing students transition, finding comfort, whether it be in friendship, in sports, um, in our in our clubs, we have uh, clubs which uh, I'm I'm hoping down the road we can do more frequently. Right now it's about once a month, but uh, you know grades aside, I understand that ninth grade being a transitional year, that's something that we're working with students on to help them uh, develop a routine. But at large, uh, you really could get a sense of uh, the ninth grader's comfort and ability to be successful when you see them in the hallway, when they're interacting with each other, and they're um, they're branching out and, and getting involved. Uh, so that's one of the ways that I see how they, uh, one, one determinant of their success and comfort. And you know, one of the things that we do that I think really helps our ninth graders transition and feel comfortable and become successful quickly is we have a, a senior mentor program mm -hmm. that um, our, our uh, guidance Thank put you. together and Ms. Clabby put together. And seniors come in and they work with the ninth graders in home rooms. It's a small homeroom group. They've got uh, a, a kind of a big brother or a big sister um, in the homeroom who, who gives them advice, helps them with problems, helps them find where the rooms are the first couple of days. All these things that can be very intimidating to a right. brand new ninth grader in a brand new high school with 550 or 600 other, other people there. So That's very true. Um, I, think, I think our senior mentor program is very important too. Um, Laura, you want to talk a little bit about the Student Success Program and what that's all about and, and how that works at Wyndham Tech? Yeah, the, there are these, these, these things that have been around in the, in the guidance world for a long time called the Student Success Plans. And for a while, uh, it was just, uh, we weren't quite sure what they were going to be. There was a lot of talk and there were mandates that were coming to us from uh, from the state saying that we had to implement student success plans, but as guidance people, we weren't really sure how that was going to translate into real life. But now they they really are. They're here. They're tangible. We know what they are, and they're really starting down in the middle school level. They're, they're, the, the, the mandate, the state is telling us that they want these student success plans beginning in grade six. And basically a student success plan is this idea that a child is going to be uh, watched and the work that they do and the growth that they make and the goals that they want to achieve are all going to be housed in this what's hoping like a digital or a uh, electronic document and that that can go with them from grade 6 to grade 7 to grade 9 to grade 12 and by the time the student is really done with their public education they will have this 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 document that actually lives on a, whether it be a, a thumb drive or whether it exists on a cloud drive, uh, but that has everything about the child's background, uh, what their goals and aspirations are, uh, careers that they uh, want to pursue, uh, personality interest inventories, things of that nature, um, resumes, cover letters. So it's this all-inclusive document that exists that the hope is that the student will really be able to take with them as they move forward into the real world. Great. And, you know, there's, there's kind of this discussion out there. It's, it's been around for a long time, but I think it's maybe even more relevant right now. Um, we see in the press uh, the costs of attending college. We see huge levels of student indebtedness for students that do go to college, the loans they take out. Uh, many college students are no longer on the four-year BA or BA plan, but it's a five-year, a six-year plan. And certainly technical schools um, are perhaps uh, a, a way to 
to look around at options other than college. And, you know, so there's the debate out there about mm -hmm. is college for everybody and what about kids at the tech schools? Laura or any, or any of you, do you want to just talk a little bit about uh, pros and cons of college and what, what Wyndham Tech does to prepare kids for college? And is college for everybody? Well, you know, people will often come to us and say, well, because you guys are our school counselors in a technical high school, you must only work with students who don't want to go on to school. You must only want to work with people that want to get the grease under their fingernails and get right out to work. The great part about working at Wyndham Tech, or probably is true in all the technical schools, is that we have a hugely diverse group of kids. So you could be in a classroom sitting there, you're sitting in the middle, the guy to your left is going to graduate in three months and going to go work out on the HVAC truck with his uncle and work on his apprenticeship to become a, a master HVAC tech. The person to your right might be going on to UConn to early childhood education because they're going to they're going to pursue to be a, to be an educator. And maybe you are in auto and you are going to uh, to go to the military and take your auto skills and uh, and get an MOS where you're you're fixing Humvees. It's a very very exciting place to work because our kids are so diverse in what they want to do. And for us, as counselors, when you come out of a, a high school counseling program where you learn to be a counselor, there is often this very large, and in our opinion, unfair uh, focus on a college for all model. And that is not what we promote in our department. We are a technical high school, so while we are proud and hopeful for all of our graduates who do decide to go on to college, and we help them and we prepare them and we get them ready for the SAT or the ACT and we help them jump through all of those academic hoops that they're going to need for college. We are equally as proud of our students who have no intention of going on to either a two or a four year model. Oh, you bet. And they want to get out there and they want to work. And that's where our model is so fabulous because we can do both. If a kid wants to go on, super. If a kid doesn't, super if they want to do a little bit of both great but it is not taboo at Wyndham Tech to say I don't want to go on to school I want to work and we are just proud and encouraging to all of our kids and I and I hope that that's a, a fair assessment of what our philosophy is it is and I just actually finished up a meeting with juniors today as a matter of fact doing a lesson on post-secondary planning and I think our motto between our whole entire department really is we don't care what your plan is but have a plan have long and short-term goals. Don't be that kid that's hanging out at your parents' house, living in the basement. Might sound cool for a couple of years, but do that while saving some money to then eventually have another plan. So we don't think one option is better than the other. We just think having a plan is a fantastic But even at the, at the same time, we do have students who are confused. They, they don't feel pulled in any one direction. Uh, I think as we build relationships with students, the, the biggest thing we can do to, to, that will benefit them in the long term uh, is to just say to them, that we, we support you, we're, we're there to help, and encouraging them like uh, we do through the use of the career cruising mm -hmm. program, getting a student to learn about themselves, like whether they do, you know, through the exploratory program, where they're becoming more in tune with different shops based on certain things they feel they do well. Well, we're constantly encouraging the students to reach within, and uh, whether it be through all the interest inventories and, and the, um, the different things we do on the career cruising program to help inform them more about what it is that they have and what they might utilize in various professions. They're more informed. Hopefully, in the end, they can make better decisions. The goal, at least my personal philosophy, is the more information that we can get them to either find out on their own or uh, through what we do, <clears throat> through their work, the sooner that we can get them to connect with, with what it is they, I believe, all students, we all have a calling and a purpose. Um, so I, I like to work very hard to support them, make them feel like I'm there for them, like we're there for them, and we want to help them get to that point because there is no better feeling, uh, and I say it to them, no better feeling than to get up every day. We all have to work, um, but to get up and be able to go to a job that you really enjoy, that is a wonderful, wonderful thing. And you know what? I look at the three of you, and I know you love what you do, right. and it really comes across, and the kids know it, the parents know it. I love what I do. 
Um, Wyndham Tech is a, re it's a really great place to be. It's a great high school. Um, with just a minute or two left, Scott, could you just tell, tell those out in the audience what they can do um, or what their kids can do if they want to find out more about Wyndham Tech or how to apply? Or right. Uh, quite simply, we hold an annual open house. Uh, a lot of information. Uh, I think it's uh, good information to have when you can visit us, ask questions in person. Uh, we have a wonderful website that we're always trying to update and bring, bring more information to that. Um, so definitely, you know, stop by, uh, check it out. If you don't see what you're looking for, you can always call guidance. I mean, we are the hub of information for the school, whatever. And the phone number is? It is 456-3879. Uh, call Mrs. Campbell at extension 311. Um, and uh, we're always running around doing things, but uh, we're more than happy to, to uh, assist in any way we can. We have specialized tours that we can arrange. Mm -hmm. We really will bend over backwards to, to really try to, to um, just shine a light on what we have to, to offer. And we really want to, uh, we want to really make that special connection with parents and students. And, and um, if we're the right choice for them, we want to help facilitate growth and, and get them out into the workforce and make them feel real special about uh, what they've achieved and what they can accomplish. So we're all about supporting that. And we really are a part of the community. Wyndham Tech will always be a part of Wyndham Willow Manic. We want to reach out as much as we can we want to bring in students from other area towns as well, and we want to continue to be a, a vital and an important part of education in the community. So thank you all for being here with us today. And uh, parents, you. we look forward to working with you and meeting your children and um, having a great year with our new freshman class. Thanks, everybody.